And we're back. Um, <laughs> well, boys, we've done it. We said we'd be back, and um, and here we are, episode two of the uh, Circus of Safety. Um, how are we, Des? How are you going today? Yeah, doing well, thank you. Looking forward to the long weekend. Fantastic. Yeah, uh, here in Aotearoa, uh, Matariki weekend. Uh, today is effectively, well, it might be Thursday. Today is um, is Friday, which is pretty cool. What about you, Andy? How are you going? Good, good. Uh, taking a few days off out in, in Wellington at the moment. Um, spending a bit of time with the family. Out to Zealandia Fantastic. this afternoon and uh, wife and son are at uh, to Papa as we speak. Oh, nice. Well, uh, kia ora. Thank you for joining us there, Andy. Uh, hey, um, listen, yeah, no, it's great. Um, lo- loads been happening uh, here at the um, with the team and the Circus of Safety. Uh, you'll notice up in the um, the top right-hand corner there, we, we've got, I don't know if you'd call that, call that a logo or a, a, a mismatch, but um, I kind of pulled that together when preparing us to go live. Uh, we're going to be on Spotify soon, so it's so been, a, been a lot going on. Um, in that in that space, um, we're going to be on Patreon soon. So um, you know, for those of you that want a bit more um, and a bit extra, we're going to be um, going lot, um, onto Patreon, and we'll be sharing details with you shortly. We've got the Circus of Safety uh, LinkedIn page. Really keen for you to jump in and um, and join on that, which would be really great. Help us get some some likes and some followers and and all those good things, and and start a wee bit of a community there, so we can we can chat a bit more about these. Um, and the one thing that's been really awesome, we've just been talking about merchandise. So um, we are we're going to be launching merchandise. We we don't have a date on this yet, do we, boys? Not yet. No, no, not yet. But we we've been bantering around some good ideas. Um, we're not going to share them with you now because if we share them, we're worried that this is going to be so successful that that people are going to steal them and run with them and make millions of dollars out of us. I guess <laughs> why wouldn't you? Hey, um, hey, Des, just before we get over to the spinning wheel of death, um, yeah, mate, how's how's the last two weeks been for you? What have you been up to? Ah, uh, well, um, did a talk earlier this afternoon at the NZISM Construction Forum, and um, that was good. Um, some they're a good good bunch, and some good good engagement on that. That was exciting. Oh, cool. But other, apart from the other, apart from that, the other the two weeks. Just been business as usual, I think. Yeah. Fantastic. Saving lives one key strike at a time, eh? That's it. Nice. Um, uh, now, now, this is going to be the exciting one, Des. This is uh, you and me living vicariously through this man's uh, worldly exploits. Uh, Mr. Evans, uh, how's the last two weeks been for you? School holidays, so I've been taking it easy, hanging with the family. I guess the, the big thing was the, uh, the, the public release of the FENS report. Uh, on Friday last week, into the Murawai yes. uh, fatalities, so had some positive feedback around that, which is good. Always nerve wracking handing handing those reports in and waiting for the feedback, but uh, I'm fairly proud of what we've done there. No, excellent. No, it's um, I was I was fairly proud of for you. Uh, I happened to be having lunch with a uh, a friend of mine, a volunteer firefighter based out of Kumu, uh, who knew the guys involved in that, and, and actually was out there herself on the night in question and um i know that community uh the volunteer firefighting community has been waiting with anticipation uh for that report so no doubt some light reading for all of us over the weekend i can't wait uh to to have a read uh last two weeks for me really um don't tell my boss this but i don't think i've been doing sweet fa really um been designing logos uh adding to the spinning wheel of death um yeah really just kind of working out how to take this uh to the next level but uh, the truth be told, I've, I've been working as well, uh, been quite good. We're really looking to integrate the way we we do safety, just in the way we do business, which has been really cool. And and been doing going through the last really two weeks have been annual reviews and engaging with uh, uh, over fifty percent of our staff face to face, having conversations about you know what's working for them, what we can do to help them, and and what we can do to improve them. And uh, the cool thing for me is we didn't talk about safety once, but we talked about safety the whole time, uh, which was really cool. So uh fantastic okay gentlemen well um hey enough chit chat we don't have a lot of time uh because we're going to wrap this up at at four o'clock because it's a long weekend uh des uh wants to head off no doubt andy well looks like you've got to go join your family at Tapapa. and um 
I gotta gotta head off too. So I'm gonna gonna go to the spinning wheel of death team and um let's see what the topic of the day is gonna be. Oh, here we go, exciting times. Oh, there we go. There we this go. This is fixed. This is a fuss. <laughs> go upstairs, team. I don't think we could have landed on anything better for a long weekend. We're not supposed to get that till six months' time. <laughs> oh, well. What, why Why leave the hard stuff till later, right? So um, if you didn't see that, um, oh, actually, really quickly, did you hear the music? Yes, loved it. Have we got a license for it? Love it. I hope so, because otherwise we're going to get a whole bunch of litigation come through. Does anyone know a good lawyer? A good one, no. Looking for a good lawyer. <laughs> okay, I'll take any lawyer. Do I know any lawyers? Um, getting desperate. Okay, so um, if you're not sure what that just landed on, uh, Safety 2 or the new view, this is definitely not rigged. Um, so the whole concept with the spinning wheel of death, if you're, if you're not familiar with it, and I don't know why you would be, because this is only episode two, but... Uh, over the time, over the two weeks that um, we don't, in between shows, we are constantly messaging each other, updating each other, coming across things in the real world that we 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 operate in, and we're adding them as topics to the spinning wheel of death. Also, I refer to as SWAD. Now that is cool. Um, so. Then what happens is with the spinning wheel of death, as we grow the sort of list of safety topics that we want to talk about, we then uh, go live uh, with the spinning wheel of death and we spin it. And whatever topic it lands on, we then spend the next 40 or so minutes discussing our thoughts or the like on, on said topic. This is not rigged. We have not prepared any of this conversation that's about to take place. So, um, Des, can you just run through our legal um, term, please? Um. Oh, our disclaimer. Is that what you're after? Yes, that's I one. Our disclaimer. I forgot to write that down. Discuss constitutes legal advice. Um, Fantastic. If you're going to act on it, you need to seek specific legal advice for your specific circumstances. That should do it. Awesome. Thank you, Des. Appreciate that. So there's our disclaimer. We're into it. So, uh, do I have a, a raise of hands? Who wants to have a crack at this first? What do, what do we think? Safety two, the new view. Um, how about I start with the question? Um, do we think they're the same thing? Are they the same thing? Can I can I start with a more fundamental question? Oh yeah. Oh god. Here we go. Uh, you know, we, the whole point of this thing, Andy, is that we stick with the topic. Yeah, absolutely. No, 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 absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. So, as usual. So, who's read the book? What book? Is it book? Safety two. Safety one. Safety two. Eric Holnagel. Ah. Oh. Okay, so that would well, probably be a good starting guy. point to talk about it. <laughs> hey, let's well let's take it away, Andy. Take it away, mate. Oh, well, the answer is yes. I have read it. I've read it three times. <laughs> well, it sounds like you're an expert on the topic because I've not read it once. Uh, Des, have you re have you even heard of the book Safety One, Safety Two? I have heard of it. I haven't read it. I'm going to take. Well, Andy's read it three times, so I'll take one of them. <laughs> cool. Okay. Hey, hey, can I take the other one? Yeah. Really there we go. On average, so, we've all so, read it once. Yeah, but we all, um, I'm sure we've all heard of um, Eric and, and the work that he's doing in, in this space. And so, Andy, um, what are your thoughts on the book? Um, it's like a lot of Eric Holnagel's books, very interesting ideas. Um, often a little bit convoluted, I find. Um, but I think it's, it's a, where he's going with it is a very interesting concept. And I don't think it's it's not really about safety. And um, I was fortunate enough a number of years ago to take Eric Holnagel out for dinner. And um, as you do, and along with Monty Hogg, of course, you both know Monty. Um, um, uh, you're forgetting somebody else. Oh, and Corinne as well. Corinne from, um, yeah, um, KGR. She, she was there as well. Cool. Yeah, so we had a lovely, uh, we had a lovely dinner. I actually paid for it. And um, it was such a great opportunity to, to talk to him about safety too and resilience engineering and ETO in particular, my, my favourite. And um, one, of the, one of the things that's, that struck with me was that he was getting a little bit concerned. That's, this is about three years ago, just before COVID, 
and um, he was getting a little bit concerned that it becomes safety one versus safety two when in reality that was never the intention of it and he was more saying that at the at the time calling it safety two was what he really meant um because it served a purpose but with hindsight he wished he'd sort of called it something a little bit different uh because it's more to do with organizational learning and things like that rather than safety per se as we would as we would understand so i think that that's that's an interesting uh interesting aspect of it and if you actually go on eric colnagle.com i think he's called and look at more of his recent work he actually he's got a paper in there that, that reinforces that idea that it's not really about safety one or safety two it's about these two these two elements of safety working together to create this this harmony so you know i, I don't think there's anything anything wrong with the work that he's done i think it's quite good it's quite insightful but i think the way it's been portrayed by certain elements is perhaps not helpful Yeah, I, I um I think Oh, it looks like the connection on Wellington is is running out, or is it my connection? No, I was saying for me that last sentence by Andy was muted. Oh, okay. Well <laughs> maybe it's time we kept him quiet. But yeah, listen, I, I, I got the gist of what he was saying there and, and Andy, I, I tend to agree, I think. Uh, and that's one of the things that's really, really concerned me. And I know it's been the basis of a number of our conversations uh along the way, is is it seems to have become this tug of war between effectively as you've identified, safety one versus safety two. Uh, and I know something that we've been talking about, um, how about we just get on and do safety, right? So um, that doesn't necessarily mean it's specifically one or the other, I guess, and, and that's been the, been the challenge and, and some confusion. Des, uh, any thoughts for you to lead into this topic? Yeah, it's, it's, my thoughts kind of mirror Andy's, um, what Andy mentioned, because I, I've never really understood the that tug of war between safety one and safety two. Um, doesn't make sense to me because they're just tools in your toolkit as a safety practitioner. And, you know, sometimes you will direct a worker to, to follow steps in a procedure and other times you'll be asking a worker for their view on what, what's the best course of action is. Um, and that just depends on the circumstance. It's got nothing to do with whether one's a better approach or not. It just depends on the circumstance. So, you know, I'll, I see sometimes, you know, the debate on LinkedIn and other forums where people describe themselves as a safety two practitioner and, and i don't really understand it I, and i would like to understand why they would describe themselves that way because to me it seems like uh, to make an analogy to be like a carpenter describing themselves as a hammer and nails carpenter and they're against drills and screws <laughs> and so, why they're just tools in your toolkit why would you not use the best tool for the job at the time it doesn't make any sense yeah, no, no, fantastic. And and, and I'm starting to think back uh, to our conversation um, two weeks ago. Is, is this possibly something similar along the lines of how do you go also, I guess one of my things that's going through my mind is how do you get, say we spoke about two weeks ago, how do you get beyond compliance if you haven't even necessarily got to compliance, right? So, and, and does the same thing sort of apply here? I mean, if, if you've got uh, a situation where, individuals or, or workers um people that are doing you know at, at the end if you haven't actually managed to nail down the basic um approach to safety and and the the processes around what effectively would be known as safety one how, how do you get to safety two it, i mean it, it presents an interesting concept like at some some stage depending on where you are in your journey i guess you've got to start somewhere right um and and until we get that the concepts and the basic understanding and the education and the, the learning and some systems to start with how do you then get to the next level do you think it's some, as simple as that like maybe you know how do you how do you i mean can you go from nothing because there are still some organizations out there that i guess are doing nothing that have got some really low levels of of, of process or safety or whatever you want to call it and go straight to to safety too or does it have to be a, a journey for want of a better description from one to the other or any thoughts around that oh again it goes it goes back to how how you define things and this is what this is what i think a lot of debates happen around this is that 
things aren't clearly defined up front. So then you, people end up talking at cross purposes or just having conversations, the conversation's sake, <laughs> ironically, um, which is which is which is quite interesting. But it doesn't actually achieve you anything or get you anywhere. And I think that you need to do safety one before safety two. I mean, what what unless you've clearly quantified what safety one and safety two are, um, I think it's you know it's a nice conversation to have, but it doesn't really help the bigger picture. And you almost start adding to by calling them out separately or without defining them. You're adding sort of fuel to that fire of that of that debate and that confrontation between between the two. When in in my mind. And again, there's lots of different definitions of this, but if we can define some basic terms up front. So for me, the the management of hazards is what safety is all about. Now, how you do that doesn't really matter, but that's fundamentally what safety is, is the management of hazards to minimize harm and exposure to people. Now, you can dress that up however you want, but fundamentally, you can't do safety if you don't know what your hazards are. And, and that's what you've got to get Got, got to get back to and whether you call that safety one safety two or safety 10 doesn't really matter but you can't do safety if you don't know what your hazards are you know and and that's a fair call uh and, and i guess it's about keeping you know is, is i guess that's another great question do we do we feel and i guess there's a bit to get your thoughts on this do we feel this whole uh different terminology around safety one safety two i know your thoughts around the toolbox which again was a great analogy but do you think it's creating confusion? Do you think it's it's causing um, uncertainty out there amongst people that that already think safety is a is over bureaucratic and 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 a waste of time and this whole you know rigmarole or whatever? Do any do we think that maybe yeah the the, the terms are causing confusion and, and frustration potentially even uh, out there amongst the general user? Yes, is my short answer. I I think and alluding to what we spoke about last time we, we did this is I think it's a distraction. I think this big debate around safety one, safety two, just just get in there and figure out what your hazards are. Use all the tools in your toolkit to make it work and get on with the job. Like, it doesn't mean anything. Exactly. And I mean, no, no one, I guess we went back to, you know, when we spoke about it two weeks ago, we talked about how do we actually understand if we've even achieved compliance and we spoke about going into uh the you know effectively having to go into a court and be be judged by a judge as to whether we've we've done everything that's reasonably practicable uh and we, we've met you know the letter of the law for want of a better description that no no nobody in their right mind is going to stand up and say well you know hey listen it's okay we, we were practicing safety one or hey it's okay we were practicing safety two right it's 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 about doing everything that we can uh to do that and i guess like you said there's it raises a, another great point is for throwing out a whole bunch of analogies there as i'm writing and, and frantically updating the spinning wheel of death i'm going to put out a thought there do we think then uh, and andy it'd be great to get your thoughts on this is it creating is effectively the the different terms creating um safety clutter for want of a better term just thought i'd throw that in the mix it's a, i agree with des it's, it's it's a distraction from the core core principles of what we're trying to achieve so i think that when we start what we're trying to achieve there's, there's two aspects to it there's one about understanding the hazards and actually managing the hazards and reducing risk the second part is how you do that in an organizational context because I think one's quite easy. You know, you can look at a hazard and you can say we can put these controls in place. That's 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 what we would classify as risk management, relatively straightforward. Where it becomes complex is why you're trying to maintain that within an organizational context. So, you know, that that's that's a that's a harder thing to do than say when you work in a height you need edge protection. That's quite straightforward. And I think if we try and keep things as sort of simple as that, and you can call them whatever you want, but it's much better to call them things that mean things to people um, because then you get that engagement and that buy-in. The problem we've got is that we work in safety day in, day out, but unfortunately, most people that do safety aren't safety people, if that makes sense. You know, safety is just a small part of their role or they would perceive it to be a small part of their role. And therefore, that's how, that really should be the audience of all this sort of stuff. The safety one, safety two debate, I don't think would happen between a supervisor and a manager on a on a building site, on a construction site, for example, 
So, you know, it, it sort of, it becomes the sort of, that, I mean, I just got visions of sort of Parisian cafes and people smoking nasty cigarettes, uh, philosophizing about the world. You know, it's, it's the sort of, it's that domain of the safety people that talk about this. Um, and the really, I think safety people would be much better off working within organizations to help simplify systems, processes, and build engagement rather than making it potentially more complex or them sound cool. And then as, as Des, Des uh, alluded to, right, I guess when in there doing that and supporting those organizations and supporting those those people out there doing the work, using their entire toolbox, right? I mean, it makes sense though, I guess, too. I, I really like Des's and that idea, maybe because we're both in construction, I don't know. But, um, you know, you, you why would you only use half your toolkit when you're trying to do something, right? You you wouldn't. It doesn't make sense. You'd, you'd use everything available to you. And, and now again, maybe do we think possibly... Is it maybe um, our lack of understanding around this whole safety one, safety two conversation? And it'd be great to get a safety two practitioner on the show to maybe enlighten us around it. Does anyone know one? Um, uh, oh, there's a there's a few of them bantering around on LinkedIn that are that are engaged. With. I mean, listen, they, they're great people, right? Let's oh, not. Absolutely. Let's, it's all about learning. <laughs> let's not take that away. We, we'd we'd have a, a great a great hoot at a pub or something and and, and a yarn, but. I mean, maybe are we? Do you think possibly there's a chance that we're misunder? Because the three of us seem to be on the same page around. There appears to be this perception that it's safety one versus safety two, or safety one or safety two. Do you think maybe we've actually got it wrong, and we we are misunderstanding what these people, what, what what this is all about? Maybe maybe it actually is about the whole lot. I, I don't know. Um, is there a chance that we've got it wrong and or misunderstood it? Yeah, I'm open to the idea that I've misunderstood it. I'm relying on what I've seen on LinkedIn. I haven't read the book, but I'd be interested in that. I've got a copy. I've got a copy of the book. I can, I can pass it over to you, Des. Thank you. It's got some. Well, um, they, they, it's got some notes in it. Well, hey, listen, I, I, um, I'm gonna put it out there. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put it out there now. Some may say I'm a dreamer. But I'm not the only one. Um, you know, you know what? And, and listen, I, I, I get it. He may not want to. I'm going to put the call out. I'm going to put the shout out to Eric Hogginale himself. Can we get Eric on the show? Like, it'll be really cool. I mean, listen, why not? Let's let's put it out there between the three of us. Surely we know more than three other. He people, might be listening right? now. I'm linked in with him. Quite frankly, he very well could be. I mean, we don't know. I mean, Eric, if you're listening, shout out to you. Give us a like or something. Um, but hey, listen, why don't we try? I mean, listen, Andy, you've had dinner with the man. Um, yeah. Let's put yeah, it out yeah, there. Yeah, let's, monkfish, if you're interested. Let's put it out. Let's get him. <laughs> let's let's reach it out. So, listen, if anyone knows Eric, um, I don't know where in the world he is right now, but listen, let's reach out. Let's try get Eric on the show because it would be great. It'd be really awesome because I think. The concerning thing is, I'd like to think the three of us were relatively. Um, let, let's just go. The three of us are educated to some extent, right? We, we'll stick with that. We'll keep it simple. I'd like to think the three of us are relatively worldly in, in our view ar around this topic. And I'd like to think the three of us were relatively practically based individuals. And in saying all that, if the three of us have possibly got the concept of what this all is and how this is all supposed to work uh, wrong, then surely there's a concern that, that that the masses have got this wrong, right? I mean, surely we can't be the three stupidest people in the universe, right? Um, so, yeah, I, I reckon let's let's reach out to the stars. Um, I've thrown you boys under the bus here. I'm dragging you down with me. We're going to go hunting and stalking Eric, um, and let's see if we can get him on the show. Um, and if we can't get Eric because... Um, we don't have enough pulling power. Listen, we'll take anybody, uh, really. Uh, so if there's any safety two practitioners out there uh, that would like to join us, maybe in a fortnight's time, we can relive the same topic and and have that conversation around enlightening us, enlightening us into into how the concept works. Because I've got another question for you guys, and uh, we, we we sort of started touching on this a couple of weeks ago when we actually chucked this topic up on the spinning wheel of death, and. And that was safety two slash the new view. 
are they the same thing? Are they different things? Any kind of thoughts around that? Can I just, um, so for anybody that's interested, if you, there's a website, it's called safety, safetysynthesis.com. It's part of Eric, Eric Holnagel's websites. And um, just as part of that, he says, the terms safety one and safety two have been useful to make a point that it is possible to look at safety from a different perspective. The problem, however, is that the meaning of the word safety in safety two has little to do with the traditional interpretation of safety. It would therefore be useful to find a term that on one hand represents the safety two perspective intents, but on the other avoids the use of the six letters safety. Luckily, such a term exists. It's synesis. So he talks about synesis Synesis. now. So, and this is from 2019. So from the 11th of November, 2019, Eric Holnagel, who authored Safety 2, uh, Safety 1, Safety 2, is actually pushing to to cease using the term Safety 2 and move towards using the term Safety Synesis, which I thought was interesting. Wow. I don't think I could say that uh, word properly. Synesis. Synesis. Okay. Now I'm even more confused. Um, I've got something for you that might throw a spanner in the works. Um, Not on that point, but on the whole safety to new view um, safety. And that is a recent decision from the New South Wales District Court. It's Safe Work New South Wales and Southern Meats, 2023 New South Wales District Court 204. And the court emphasized in that the um, importance of taking disciplinary action when workers do not conform with the established procedures. Now, we talk about compliance and moving beyond compliance, but there's a clear indication from a court in Australia, which will be influential in New Zealand in, in a big way, that taking disciplinary action against employees when they failed to follow the correct process is, is, is an important step in meeting your, meeting your duty um, and doing everything reasonably practicable. So what does that mean for safety too and new view safety? Well, I guess it depends and, that, and that's where look, um, it'd be great to get a, a uh, practitioner of this, uh, this concept. Uh, to help us understand, is it is it all in, or or is it actually really a combination of the two that they are applying? Because I guess that would indicate you'd have to have those sort of um, you know those rules and those procedures in place. Because uh, I'm, I'm not suggesting for a minute that rules and procedures aren't in place with safety too, and that's that's definitely not what I'm saying. But yeah, so maybe we need that's I guess highlights even more so the importance of maybe getting one of the, uh, getting somebody on that could enlighten us as to the actual back end workings of how these concepts work. So again, um, if someone is listening, uh, it'd be great to get Eric's view on this, but also any other safety practitioners, if you want to jump on in a fortnight, it'll be back to our Friday morning slot in two weeks time. Uh, let us know, we'd love to have you on the show and you could enlighten us more because you raise a valid point there, Des. We, is that then uh, the uh, legal requirements, I guess, uh, fighting the application of how we're trying to manage it, right? And how we're trying to support our people, which which becomes a real interesting uh, dilemma when you're trying to, you know, when you've had the unfortunate experience of having something happen and, and trying to defend yourself uh, from a legal context, right? Which is not what we want to be doing, but unfortunately, sometimes if, if that's what happens, then, then we've got to go. And so then how do you blend those two things together, right? How do you, can you, can you go down that road of having to discipline workers for, for not following uh, processes, regardless of how they've been developed, and still maintain a concept of, of you know, using learning and worker safety new view um, approach, or, or can you not? So, yeah, no, it'd be really interesting to get somebody to enlighten us, I guess, a bit more, right? Eh? It, it would. I think, and again, I, I go back to my usual droning on. It would be clear to have some very clear definition. It'd be good to have some clear definitions of what these terms actually mean. Because, you know, if, if Mr. Holnagel or Professor Holnagel is there saying that he doesn't really like the term safety too that he invented anymore, then it, it begs the question why we're still using it if the inventor of it doesn't like it anymore. Good point. 
and and I don't know if we're going to have enough time today to discuss uh, in detail. And maybe again, we can wait for that next show where we manage to get either Eric himself or a or a safety two practitioner on board about the difference between safety two and the new view. Because I'm really interested to understand this new view. Uh, is it actually is it actually new? Um, is what what we're trying to apply here? Maybe it's new in, in in a safety context. I don't know, but is it new to the world? You know. Um, yeah, I've got some more questions. I'm I'm fascinated to to follow through. And Andy, it sounds like you're in a in a bus terminal, mate. No, I've I've I was in a quiet part of a hotel. Oh, okay. But it's suddenly not so quiet. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. The other um, uh, yeah, because I've got a, a yeah, I had a whole bunch of fascinating questions that I still would like to to explore on this topic, but. But we've been going now for for about thirty odd odd minutes, team, and and I think it's time to sort of draw it to a close. And and maybe I'll leave this topic on uh, on the spinning wheel of death. Just give it one more go round if it, if it so chooses, and we we feel the need to. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to get somebody from the safety two practitioner aspect of it to help us understand this concept a bit more, and and help us educate ourselves as well as the the hundreds of thousands of people. Uh, no doubt tuning into this this live stream on the eve of our Matariki weekend. So, there's anything exciting planned for the weekend? Well, we know what Andy's up to. So, what are you up to for the weekend, Des? Um, the gripping life I lead. I, I might have the opportunity to mow the lawn uh, with a bit of dry weather. And and I think only those people living in New Zealand would understand how how valuable that would be right now, right? <laughs> it's everything. That's another whole topic. It's just yeah. So I'm looking forward to some nice weather. The forecast is looking good. Oh, fantastic. I'd love to talk about that, to understand where all this water is coming from. I'll tell you what, it's phenomenal. Um, Andy, how long are you in Wellington for and anything else exciting planned? Um, flying out at 6, 6.30 tonight, back up to Auckland. And then I've, um, I've got to, I'm have got. i going to do some work tomorrow. I know it's a public holiday, but I've got to do some marking. Some of my diploma, ah. some of my diploma students are getting a bit impatient. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to. Um, I'm going to be kind of continuing to sort of maybe spend some time with the family, which will be great and build, continue to build on the circus of safety. Might look to produce some show notes um, and some learnings to take away, and uh, yeah, keep updating the LinkedIn page. So no doubt, a invigorating weekend, and also need to get into my lawns and give them a mo. So look forward to that. Maybe a Sunday afternoon job uh, as we go along. So. As always, guys, it's been a pleasure. Uh, hopefully you found the conversation insightful. Hopefully everyone else has found the conversation insightful. Uh, and yeah, we'll post that link up there's in the um, in the chat too on the LinkedIn page so we can get people talking about it and, and get their thoughts. So as always, please leave us messages. Uh, let us know what you'd like to add to the spinning wheel of death. Uh, otherwise, have a great weekend and we'll see you in a fortnight. Thank you. See you then. See ya.